Hi, my name is William Earnhardt, and I am the pastor of the Bushnell, Homosassa, and Inverness, Florida Seventh-day Adventist churches. And I want to share with you a passage that some people find difficult to understand because they they think it contradicts God's character of, of love and wanting everybody to be saved. It's found in Mark chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Now in Mark chapter 4, Jesus is giving the parable of the sower that goes out to sow the word of God. And after that, the disciples are asking Jesus what it meant and asking, you know, why are you speaking in parables? And so in verses 11 and 12 of Mark 4, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Jesus replies, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. And so a lot of people are wondering, well, why, why doesn't God want people to understand? Why doesn't he want them to be forgiven? Well, we need to keep in mind, first of all, the fact that God is able to use figure of speech. God can use sarcasm. And it's not that he doesn't want us saved. He wants the whole world to be saved. But it, it's it's like, for example, if a teacher were to say, if she knew her, her students were not prepared for a test, she might be sarcastic and say, heaven forbid my students actually study and pass this test. Well, she's being sarcastic. She doesn't mean that she wants her students to fail. Again, it's using figure of speech. And as we look at this closer, who is he talking to when he says that you can understand, but not those on the outside? He's talking to his disciples, right? Well, in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus tells his disciples to go out and make more disciples. Go out into all the world making disciples. In other words, go out in all, into all the world making people that will understand my parables. So God does want us to understand. The, the fact of the matter is, it tells us in 1 Corinthians 2.15, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And that means we need the Holy Spirit to understand them. And Jesus told everyone that if, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, don't you know that your father wants to give the Holy Spirit to all those who ask? All those who ask. Meaning that once we become disciples of Jesus and are filled with the Spirit, we're no longer on the outside. Jesus isn't wanting us to be on the outside. That's why Jesus is telling us, my father will give you the Holy Spirit if you'll ask. Then you'll understand the secrets of the kingdom. He's not wanting us to be on the outside. He's wanting us to become disciples and be on the inside and understand. And, and remember, the, uh, the sower is giving the seed so that people will help understand the gospel, some of it falls on hard ground. And that's the thing we have to keep in mind. God doesn't want us to have hard hearts. It was Pharaoh, when it says that Pharaoh hardened his heart, it says other places that God hardened his heart. Well, how did God harden his heart? Well, when God gave all these signs and miracles for Pharaoh to see God's love and power. Pharaoh resisted that. He resisted those signs and hardened his heart to those signs. So it was actually by resisting God's love that he hardened his heart. And it's the same with us as well. The same sun that melts butter hardens clay. There's nothing different about the sun. It's the way these elements react to the sun. 
And so the same mercy that was softening other people's hearts, Pharaoh, by resisting, was hardening his own heart. And again, the, the parable here in Mark 4 is about the sower who's sowing the seed of God's word, and it falls on different ground. Some of it's hard, like Pharaoh's heart was hard. But again, that's not the way God wants it to be. In the book of Hosea, he, he tells those with hard hearts, break up the hardness of your ground. Cultivate it, make it soft, make it receptive to my word. Don't harden yourself. And, and so that's the same thing he's doing for us. So when it says that those on the outside cannot understand, God isn't wanting anybody to be on the outside. He wants us to become disciples so that we can understand. He, he wants us to have the Holy Spirit so that we will understand. He's simply saying that those who do not cannot understand. As a matter of fact, he says here, in the last part of verse 12, otherwise they will turn and be, turn to me and be forgiven. Well, that's what Jesus wants. So what he's saying, unless they stay on the outside, unless they stay hard-hearted where they can't understand, they will turn to me. They will be forgiven. That's what God wants. One of the ways that we understand the New Testament is by the Old Testament, because the Old Testament prepares us for the New Testament. And so let's take a look in Isaiah chapter 55. And I think Isaiah chapter 55 will help us understand that passage in Mark 4, 11 and 12. And starting here with Isaiah 55, beginning with verse 1, it says, Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. This doesn't sound to me like God's wanting anybody to be left out. He's not wanting anybody to be on the outside. Yes, there are people on the outside, but that's not the way God wants it to be. In verse 2, he asks, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me, okay? Listen to me and you will eat what is good. So again, if we will listen to God, we can eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest of food. Come to me with your ears wide open. So again, in, in Mark 4, 11 and 12, he's talking about those who are on the outside, who have their ears closed, who, who are not listening, not paying attention. But he says, if you listen to me, you will eat what is good. Come to me, in verse 3, with your ears wide open. Listen, and you will find life. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you all the fail, unfailing love I promised to David. See how I used him to display my power among the peoples? I made him a leader among the nations. You also will command nations you do not know, and peoples unknown to you will come running to obey. Okay, so who are those that come running to obey? To obey? It says those you didn't know, those who are on the outside. But by God's grace, they're not going to stay on the outside. Again, Jesus told his disciples, go into all the world, into all nations, and make disciples, make people on the inside who will understand. And so this is what he's talking about right here. You also will command nations you do not know and peoples unknown to you who were on the outside, I added that, to you will come running to obey. Because I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, have made you glorious. Verse 6 of Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Okay, so again, it says in Jeremiah, seek me with all your heart and you will find me. Just like those who ask for the Holy Spirit will receive the Holy Spirit. Seek the Lord 
while you can find him, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord, let them turn to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. Verse 8, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10 of Isaiah 55. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. So again, here in Isaiah 55, it's talking about what Jesus was talking about. The sower that went out to sow. And, and here it's saying that, uh, that the snow will come down from the heavens, the rain and the snow, and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. Verse 11, it is the same with my word. I send it out. Remember, the sower was going out, sowing God's word. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. So the sower is going out there in Mark 4. And yes, some is falling on hard ground. Some is falling among the thorns. But some is also falling on that good ground. And again, remember in Hosea, God wants us all to be that good ground. And so his word always produces fruit. He says in uh, Isaiah 55, 11, it will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. That is a wonderful promise from God. When God's word is being sown, like it was there in Mark 4, it will prosper wherever God's word is sown. Again, God doesn't want people on the outside. He wants them on the inside. And he doesn't sow in vain. He doesn't sow so people will harden their hearts like Pharaoh and be lost. No, he sows it so it will produce fruit and will accomplish everything he wants it to. And it's not God's will that anyone should perish. Verse 12. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song. The trees of the field will clap their hands. So this sounds like some pretty good ground here. Where once there were thorns. Remember, Mark 4 is talking about him sowing among the thorns. He says, where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. So great honor is brought to the Lord when the word that is being sown produces the fruit that God wants it to produce. When he was telling his disciples that those on the outside cannot understand, he wasn't saying he wanted them to be on the outside. Again, he tells his disciples, go out and make disciples meaning make people, bring in people from the outside to the inside so that then they can understand with the help of the Holy Spirit. God wants all of us to be saved. His word will accomplish everything he wants it to accomplish. And he wants everyone to have a soft heart instead of a hard heart. The choice is up to us. Will we choose to stay on the outside or will we break up our hard hearts, make them good, make our hearts that good, fresh soil so that God's word can grow? That is our choice. God does not want us on the outside. He died to bring us all to him. I, I hope that this uh, has helped you understand uh, the passage in Mark 4, 11 and 12. I hope it also helps you understand how much God loves you and wants you to be in his kingdom. If you have any other questions 
about God's word, that if there are certain verses, passages of scripture that you might find confusing or hard to understand, I invite you to email me at william.earnhardt at floridaconference.com. That's william.earnhardt at floridaconference.com. Share with me in the email what passages you would like for me to address in the future, and I will be glad to do so. Thank you for joining me, and God bless you.